wonderful world. This is Silly Girl Carmen. Thank you for joining us for episode 50 with Amy L. I can't believe we are already on our 50th episode. It has been so amazing connecting with so many awesome women all over the world. And this week, our guest is originally from the U.S. and now based in London. She is a triple threat working as a DJ, singer, and producer. She has blessed us with a 60-minute mix, and I had a chance to chat with her for a quick Q&A. So stay locked in and enjoy this episode with Amy L. on Wonderful Radio. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Silly Girl Carmen. I am super happy to be sitting here with Amy L. We're going to get to know her more and talk some of her music and DJing. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm super happy that we got to connect and I get to have you on here. Um, Just for reference, where are you originally from and then where are you currently based? So I'm from Houston, Texas. So I love the USA Um, and I am based currently in London. So I'm in my little studio in London at the moment. Awesome. That's super cool. Still a work in progress. I've got the outside chair here (laughs) and homemade DJ desk and you don't even want to see this side, but it's, uh, yes, (laughs) the music can be made. So here we go. Yeah, exactly. That's how it always works. It's always like, got to just do what you can with whatever you have. And it still works. (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, it's super cool seeing you. I obviously was doing research on you as a DJ and then come to find out, I was like, oh wow, she's been killing it and it's a strong component of your music uh, being a producer. So I want to ask what came first, music production or DJing? And then how has this combination of those two worlds been for you creatively? Yeah, good question. Because I think a lot of people don't realize, well, I'm saying it now that I came from a very like singer songwriter background. I studied music um, and the DJing came later and really I got into production because I got into more dance records. I was writing them and I think, I mean, dance driven records and house music is so solely, um, it revolves around production. And I kind of got to the point where I was like, I need to produce to be able to write these records, you know? Um, And yeah, got into production and fell in love with production and writing music because that is just my love. And I was like, how am I going to perform this as an act? So I kind of looked into um, the Ableton Push 2. I looked into like live instruments because I play guitar and I sing, um, which I want to do like later down in my career is like get, you know, get some more live instruments involved and stuff. But I w- it came clear, I was like, right, I need to like get into this DJing thing. And I really, I wasn't surrounded by club events and DJing nights. I didn't know anything about it, which is quite strange. I was going to like jazz nights and open mic nights. And I was performing at them, right? Um, but I mean, it's been a great background to do that. And then, so I, I got some decks, some secondhand decks on eBay. And that was the start of it I've you know haven't looked back since then but obviously got into the DJing and throughout lockdown I just kind of fell even more in love with DJing um because I was like right I want to get and do the four deck thing I just want to get great at DJing um and then obviously your question as well is like how did the worlds kind of like combine and I think it's obviously like if you're writing a club record then essentially you're writing for other DJs right to, to DJ your music so if being a dj yourself you understand like god i really want a bit of bass like this bass needs to like go off in this in this section of the song you're gonna understand it a lot more than someone who's just not producing and not necessarily i guess i think producers sometimes follow the rules too much whereas if you can come from like a producer world and then also the djing world you can be like well do you know what i'm just gonna put this in which maybe it's not gonna work or make sense production wise but djing wise it's gonna make every dj want to play it i think mm-hmm. i love that that's awesome yeah i was i was definitely curious about that because i feel like um from where i'm coming from i'm coming from being a dj first and now getting into production but also had a little bit of like uh i'm, I'm a singer as well so songwriting and the music but i was always too intimidated to sit down and really get into the production side so it's cool yeah. that you but- it's funny you say that because I think I think most people are. I think if you come from a DJing side, it gets to a point where you're like, 
I actually need to write some tunes because that's how I'm maybe going to progress. You know, there's right. so far that you can go without having an identity. And I think it's quite, it is quite daunting. But I think if you come from the DJing side, like half the work is done for you. You know what you want to play, right? So right. if anything, it's a, also a really great stranger bow to come in that way. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. super dope. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see what else you keep uh, creating musically. I know it's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, what, what advice would you give to upcoming artists and producers who are really at the beginning stages of learning and creating music? So this is a great question. Um, I'm trying to just go from my experiences and like my one thing is definitely overthinking things. I think we have a tendency to like over plan and say like, this is how I'm going to put out this mix and why am I doing this and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, five weeks later down the line, you don't, you know, you end up not even doing it. And I think there's a certain stent, a sense, especially when you're early on in your career, just to like, just do it, like put it out. And if it doesn't work, you learn from it. Even, even with like releases, not to say you just put out, whack out any releases, but I think, you know, I'm quite new to releasing music and I think I've learned so much from my first release and now I'm on my third I mean I've done some remixes but my actual releases my singles um so yeah number one is overthinking things um and as well just create opportunities obviously social media is just the biggest platform everyone bangs on about social media but it's true like you just have to create that buzz around you in any sense and finding I don't know get connected with people who you know either inspire you or in your scene and I think if you know the tastemakers or people that potentially are going to support your music, then why do they want to support you? Like, what can you do which is different, whether or not that's putting out a series of guest mixes or whether that's doing something different. I think creating a little bit of buzz in a different way, um, thinking of something like that. And then um, just be yourself. I think be your authentic self. Like, people don't buy into it if you're just, you know, not being yourself really um i think that's my main tips of advice yeah i definitely love the first one don't overthink it because i it's definitely relatable i uh, still do it all right the time. it still happens but at least you can check yourself like okay wait i've i've beat this to the ground i'm either gonna do it or not like i can't you know creating lists i always do i still do it like i need yeah. to do this i need to do this and then it's like 3 p.m and i've done nothing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that well, that's good that you have the perspective. So yeah, just gotta jump right in. Can't overthink it. I love that. Okay. <laughs> um, I was looking on your Instagram and I saw something uh, associated with you being a part of a radio platform. Can you tell us more about Kiss Fresh? Um, how long have you been with that station, and what is your what is your show about with them? Yeah, so Kiss Fresh. Um, I'm. It's quite new. I started it in June, I think. Okay. Um, and do you know what? I have just been a massive fan. I'm sure every DJ is a fan of finding those um, those records that you can play at a live set or whatever, or live stream, because lockdown, we had so many live streams, um, where people want to just Shazam, right? That's the main thing. If yeah. you're a DJ and people are Shazamming, then you've done it right. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I've always been a big fan of supporting artists, like whether I'm small, like when I started out, and this is the thing as well, like to go back onto your last question is that, if you're a small producer or DJ, like who cares? Everyone was small and like everyone needs to work their way up. So like respect the process. And I think if you're a bigger DJ and you don't respect other people, you're not going to do well as well. And that's just about being your, yourself. But yeah, I was always keen about um, supporting these records. I had made Spotify playlists and blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting off the topic now. But with, with Kids Fresh, I'm very much like supporting those um, under the radar records like new producers female producers because I think creating this space where female producers see more female producers then they're like yeah I can do this and I think that's a whole other chat of the female sort of producer chat but I'm really into supporting supporting them and then yeah a bunch more things I hope to like get some guest mixes on there and just do it, some different things I mean it's it's quite new at the moment but um a lot in store okay awesome do you yeah. um so when when does it air or has it aired yet? Oh yeah, I should say that, shouldn't okay. I? So yeah. tune into my show um, Sunday night, seven to nine p.m. That's where you'll find it. Um, and awesome. yeah, you can just tune in and then just hear me playing tune after tune. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. I I got to look at the Kiss Kiss Fresh page and I was like, oh, this does look kind of new, but that's awesome. That's yeah, cool that yeah. you're 
going into that. Have you have you done um, kind of a radio thing in the past before this type of platform? So I did um, a platform called Changing Faces for oh, I don't even know maybe like half a year, not long. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, just because I was so into supporting other DJs and just like, again, there was this buzz in lockdown, right? Like this, I created this buzz through my live streams and stuff and mm-hmm. Kiss Fresh kind of approached me and said, like, I think you'd be great for the show. Um, and yeah, it just kind of happened. So it's new, but I'm, you know, I feel blessed to support music that I believe in and that people can like thank me for. I'm like, oh my God, why are you thanking me? Like you're creating these amazing tunes, right? Sorry. But yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, that's super dope. I love that you have that perspective, just honoring, knowing where you came from and then being in that that mindset of like, yeah, I want to pull these under under the radar people and females up and, and expose that. So that's really cool. Definitely. Um, so we're going to wrap it up with one more question. Can you tell us about any upcoming performances or projects that you're looking forward to? What is next on Amiel's calendar? <laughs> So much, not lockdown, hopefully again. Right. <laughs> um, do you know what? Just gigging now. Um, this year I'm, I'm touring with Foreverlands and then I've got some more shows with Elro. I've got other ones in the calendar as well. And then um, next year I hope to take it a bit more worldwide. And USA is my first stop. Um, right. Definitely. And then, yeah, just obviously music as well. I've been obviously in the studio and releasing music. And then just punch more things, you know, as I like, as I said, dance or whatever question it was, like sometimes things happen, you don't even realize they're happening. You just, you go with the flow. So it's going to yeah. be exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on here. Yeah. Hopefully as, as the world comes back to even more normal. Yeah. We hope to have you in the USA soon. Um, yeah. And we look forward to more of your releases. So thank you so much for coming Amazing. on. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yes. Have a good one. Yes. Cheers.